hello everyone in this video i will discuss all the settings that you have to do to make your prints look good inside bamboo studio so right now you can see this is my screen but when you will first open your bamboo studio software into your pc you will see a screen like this so this is my default screen and the first thing that you have to do just move to the prepare section now if you want to bring any file or any STL file into Bamboo Studio software and start preparing it for 3D printing. So in this video, we will discuss what are all those settings that are important that you should know. So you will have every time successful prints. So let's get started over here. So whenever you will start, you will see this first section that says printer inside this prepare section. So the first thing is that you have to add all the 3D printers that you have right now i have bamboo lab a1 mini and bamboo lab p1s so here you can see i already added these two printers but if you have some other printers what you can do you can just click on this settings option over here and then it will open this section where you can select your printer right now i had selected these two but if you let's say if you have a s2d printer so i will find the s2d option here it is bamboo lab s2d so i will select that as well and i will click on confirm and the moment i will click on confirm here you can see on the list my s2d just got added so this is how you can add your printer inside bamboo lab studio but now i'm going to slice for the bamboo lab a1 mini so i will select this printer bamboo lab a1 mini and now i also have to define the texture plate pei sheet that i'm going to use so there are different types of pei sheets available in the market even from the official bamboo lab sites so I have to specify that what kind of seat I am using. So most of the time by default, you will be getting this textured PEI seat only that looks like a golden in color. So I will select that. But if you have something else that you are just starting and bought some extra PEI seats and want to try out so you can change these things as well. So but now I will just select this texture PEI seat. So these things are done. Now we have to move on confirming this the nozzle diameter sizes so right now here it's and see it's 0.4 millimeter and yes it's right and by default in most of the 3d printers you will find there are 0.4 diameters nozzles only and then and the, under the flow i will select standard and this is the only option over here so you don't have to worry about these two things now let's come to the main part that is the filament now so whenever if you have 3d printer whether you have the ams or you don't have the ams but you have to add all the profiles available over here now in bamboo studio you also have to add your 3d printer using the wi-fi so once you are done with these two settings like diameter flow and adding the printers then you can go to the devices section and there you can add your 3d printer so right now you can see i already find it two printers that is active on my system right now that is one is this uh, p1s and then the other is this a1 mini so i had given it a very custom name over here so the moment i will select p1s let's activate the p1s and here you can see the moment i activated it on the right side here you can see these are all the materials i already loaded into my ams so right now on all four material options i had added pla only and i also have an extra option that is mpt i'm not going to use any external spool that's because of dust and and if it, since it's outside of ams it can capture moisture as well but if you want to add any of this material let's say if you want to change the material inside your ams so what you can do you can just click on this edit option that you can see a small pencil icon on the bottom and the moment you will click you will get an option to change so here in the filament right now i am using the generic pla not from bamboo studio filaments so i will change this to let's say abs so i will scroll down to the bottom and will find that option of generic abs material type so here it is generic abs material i will select that and then i also can define the color so i will click on this color option over here and i can select the color that i'm going to use so let's say in this case i'm going to use this red abs now by default it will automatically take the generic temperature that is required to print the abs material and i'm not going to change anything else because these are all optimized from the this software only so i will simply click on confirm and here you can see this material the second slot of my ams just got changed to abs material now i am not going to do anything i will simply move on to my prepare section and then under the project filaments i have to click on this 
synchronize filament list from AMS. But right now my A1 mini is selected. So I have to change this to P1S because A1 mini doesn't have that AMS. So I changed this to Bamboo Lab P1S. And the moment I changed, you can see the plate over here also got changed. The PEI said seat size because uh, on the p1s the seat size is bigger than the a1 mini so now i will click on this sync filaments and the moment i will click you can see all these four materials just got updated from my ams that i already defined under the devices these are the four materials and the same just got added under the prepare section inside this filament section now these are the filaments i had applied now the next thing is that we'll bring some object into our bamboo studio software to start slicing so how we can do that we'll learn that so to bring any object any stl file or 3mf file inside your slicer first thing you have to do you have to click on this add option over here onto the top just click on it and then you can find that file inside your folder let's say i have that file onto my desktop I will select that and will click on open so that was 3mf file and it's loading into my slicer so here it is it's loaded into my slicer so the next thing is that it, you have to correct the orientation so in my case this orientation is completely fine but if i want to change the orientation because orientation really affects the print quality so it's very very important you select a very right orientation and also it affects the functionality of the part because of the layer lines orientation so it's super important to select the right orientation of your 3d printing parts so right now we have this 3mf file imported into my slicer so i will select that by clicking on the object and then let's say i want to print it uh, vertically so i will select that i will activate this option that says lay on face i will activate that now i want to lay it towards this face so i will click on this face now you can see it just got rotated by 90 degree and this is how it looks like right now but this is not the correct orientation for this project just to show you i had rotated this one now if you want to move it so if you want to do anything with this object like move scale or whatever you have to first select the object and the moment you will select the object you will be able to see all the options on the onto the top to uh, play with this object otherwise if you will press escape or deselect it you will not be able to see these options active so it's super important it's very important to select your object first and then you can use this move tool to move your objects on anywhere onto pei seat but don't go outside this seat because otherwise it will give error so it's important now the next option is this rotate so you can also uh, rotate your object using this rotating gizmos and whatever the rotation you are giving you can see those options over here so you can also control by number for example let's say i want to keep here as 180 so i will write 180 and will press enter i will write 180 and will press enter okay so it's not rotating yeah it's rotating so this way you can also rotate so uh, and also using this rotation gizmos i can rotate so it's it's really very important and all the time if you had did something wrong you also have option to press ctrl plus z to undo the things like we used to have in other software so i will just press few ctrl plus z so here here is my object in default state now i can also use this lay on face tool that i had already explained to you but this lay on face tool will only work on the flat surfaces for example if you want to lay out using this face it's not possible because this is a curved, curved surface right so if and if i want to lay out from this face i can do that so i can select the object i can activate this option and here you can see it's automatically giving me an option to lay along this face so i will click on it and here it is it's just got laid out according to with related to that face so it's super simple now select the object again then we have the option of this cut uh, we rarely use so these were the options that were important now let's say if you want to print this object uh, into multiple colors so we have the option to paint my objects also but that will explore in some other video because painting is some completely different tool you have to learn a different kind of process and everything but in this video we are just talking about simple steps that you can utilize to get your objects ready for 3d printing so now here we had imported the object we had reoriented it in the right orientation now the next thing is that the moment you imported your object just go into the option that says process there are two options global and object 
So right now we don't know what kind of filament we are going to use for, to print this object. And to define that, what you can do, simply go on to the object section over here. And this is the STL file that you had imported, right? So this is the STL file that you had imported. And you can select that only when you are under the prepare section. Make sure that you are under the prepare section when you are doing this. So we just moved into the object option. Now I will make a right click on to this. And at the bottom, I can see that uh, option that says change filament. So let's say I want to you print this using the ABS material, but I cannot see the option of the ABS over here. So again, I have to click on the sync filament option. I will click on sync now. So now you can see the ABS just got added. So whenever you click clicking on the sync option, you can see there is a uh, two option mapping and overwriting so overwriting means whatever the filaments that you write now in your ams you can bring that into the uh, project filaments so if you click on overwrite you can see i'm only getting the exact filaments that i have right now loaded into my ams so i will make sure that it's in overwriting and we'll click on sync now and here you can see now my correct materials are all over here now under the objects i will make a right click onto my body and will change the filament to generic abs and generic abs is red in color the moment i will define that you can see the object of the color also got updated this means uh, the things that i'm going to do the slicing that i'm going to do is all for abs material only so in that case i will not be able to print from the pla and that i will show you uh, just uh, in a moment so here you can see i had defined the material for this object to 3d print now we'll move back to the global option and here inside global option there are few things that you always have to take care of while you are starting printing the first thing will under the quality section you have to make sure that your layer height is optimized if you want a draft object or if you want uh, normally we used to print on 0.2 millimeter layer height but if you want a really fine object you can play with these settings you can go up to 0.1 or a little bit lesser but not very less and to control these settings there if you click on this option there are already predefined profiles available inside bamboo studio for example in this case it's standard is 0.2 right if you want to go a little fine like 0.12 you can change that or if you want to go more further you can also select 0.08 but in this case i will select 0.2 because it takes uh, less time also the design strength is also not compromised so i think uh, the standard is the more optimized than any other settings so in this case i'm selecting 0.2 so the layer height is 0.2 and under the quality section this is one of the most important thing that you always have to confirm and the ne next thing is that you don't have to worry about these things seems precision that you can play with later when you have some little bit knowledge inside about the slicer and slicer settings but now just make sure that the layer height is correct now let's move on to the strength so under the strength you have to scroll down and you have to only make sure that the spare sparse infill density so inf infill density is very important right now we had selected the infill density as 15 percent so but if you want to change that for example if you have a solid object or anything that have more uh, solid volume in that case you can play with the volume and and my suggestion is always go with 35 percent infill all the time that works best for all the designs even if it it needs a strength or if it if it has to be managed with the weight 35 percent infill is the best option but in case if you want to go uh, more stronger or more sturdy like in some cases we like let's say we require 100 percent infill so if we'll change this infill to 100 percent so in that case you have to also change the pattern right now it's grid pattern but in case of 100% infill, you can you have to change that to rectilinear. So if you press yes, here you can see that change to rectilinear. So rectilinear is only available. You can use if you want to use the 100% infill. But here we want to use 35%. So we'll not go with rectilinear. We'll simply select the grid kind of infill pattern. And that's actually the inside volume pattern. So you don't have to worry about that at this moment. Simply select 35 and grid. That's it now the next thing is the speed that we are not going to play with because the speeds are already defined and already optimized for bamboo lab printers but if you want to play with it it's completely your option you can also do that from your phone app uh, you can control the speed there are four different options or level of speeds available for bamboo 3d printers but here we'll keep it uh, by default whatever it is 
and then we'll move on to the supports so in this body here you can see we have few areas like overhanging areas where do we need supports so what how we can define supports so simply go into the support section and enable this option so by default it will be not enabled so you just have to click on this enable support option and then the first thing is the type like what kind of support do you need so uh, in my case in this case i'm going to use the normal support but if you are painting something that is more in height you can also use the tree support so here i am going to use the normal support and then i want all my supports to be built anywhere i don't want the supports only from the build plate i will only i want supports to be from anywhere so i will i'm not going to tick these options but if you want to build your supports from the build plates only you can also select these options like uh, on build plates or whatever so it's it's on to you now rest of the thing, settings are all good now we'll move on to the last section that is this others option and here you have to make sure that this uh, prime tower is not enabled not enabled right now i just enabled it but you have to make sure that it's not enabled because it will only add extra time to your 3d print since this object is a single color object there is no need for prime tower so it only takes more time when you take this option printer will take a pause after each layer of printing and that only adds more time and frustration so avoid this option just untick this option and these are only the basic settings that is required when you are just slicing your first model inside bamboo studio now since i am almost done with all the settings and the things we had already defined now i will click on this slice plate and the moment you will click on the slice plate it will take few seconds and here is my sliced object you can see the supports are gen already generated by default so these are the options by using which we can turn on the like how the 3d printer will moves like the travel so this is the travel of the nozzle these lines you can see but this will not get printed this only shows the travel of your nozzle and like uh, what are the points where the retraction will happen and then untracked so don't worry about all these things just untick all the options only activate the same option and here you can see the filament uh, these are all the supports just got created and if you drag this cursor from the right you can see this is how it will get printed from bottom layer to top like this like this and here you can see the pattern that you can see over here this is the grid pattern so this is for the 30 percent infill and this is my support and the wall thickness you can see this, this is just two layer lines right this is these are the walls and this is this is these are the supports that you can remove when the print is finished so this is my object right so we are almost done with the slicing and now we are into preview section here you can see we are not under prepare section the moment you will click on slice plate you will come in under, under the preview section now if you will click on print plate it will ask me to send this design to my 3d printer for final printing and here we can also control the filament so right now you can see since we had defined this object filament as abs and sliced it accordingly so i cannot select the pla filament because all the controls and settings has been defined as per the pla sorry abs print profiles so only option that is available over here is a a2 that is the second section of my ams as abs so now i can simply send this object for final 3d printing but since i don't have abs loaded so I, it is just for preview also at here if you want to create a time lapse of your design you can turn this option from here so i don't want to create time lapse so i will just turn it off also all the time i prefer i suggest that keep this off auto bed labeling on because whenever you are starting print all the time it's very good uh, practice to label your bed each time because that way the success of print will be more right there will be very chan less chances of failure of prints to label the bed the, your printer will take five minutes extra but but that's worth value for example if you are printing a two hours print and if your printer if your object fails in between after one hour that's also a loss of time so it's always better to turn this option and then you can click on this send and the moment you will click on send it will start sending your final piles files and uploading it to your 3d printer uh, storage space so i'm not going to send this one so this was this was all about slicing our objects inside bamboo lab studio now if you have any questions related to this slicer like how you can do this stuff how you can uh, apply some different color onto your different objects so just comment below in this video i will be making or i will be bringing the second tutorial onto this bamboo lab slicer 
uh, because I've been using this slicer from almost six months right now and I do have two different printers Bamboo Lab P1S and A1 Mini that I'm regularly using on a daily basis so if you have any questions uh, even just get in touch with us we'll see you in the next video guys thanks for watching